Well, it's called the Low Country for a reason. As you might imagine, the name comes from the low topography in the general area extending from Savannah, Georgia to Charleston, South Carolina. This region is characterized by land that's not far above sea level, containing a good amount of marshlands along with live oaks, Spanish moss, and palmettos. So, what does this have to do with flood insurance? Well, everything. It means you will be well advised to have flood insurance even if it's not required. And if it's not required, it will just be a nominal annual amount that will certainly give you peace of mind. Hi, I'm Sue LaFavi with Ballinger Realty, and if you have any questions along the way, just call, text, or email me. Okay, first, a disclaimer. I am not an insurance agent. Always consult with your insurance carrier for expert advice. Okay, now let's dig deeper with six things you need to know about flood insurance. Number one, exactly what is the definition of a flood? A flood is defined by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, known as FEMA, as any excess of water on land that is normally dry, affecting two or more acres or two or more properties. This can be caused by heavy rains, overflowing rivers, or even damage caused by sewer backups if it's directly related to flooding. It's not burst pipes or your dishwasher or washing machine overflowing. Those claims would be part of your standard homeowner's policy. Number two, flood zones. If you're considering purchasing a property, how do you know if it's in a flood zone? The absolute best answer is to call your insurance company and have them run you a quote. I say this because although there are several websites you can go to to check on the, if the property's in a flood zone or not, they can be extremely difficult to interpret. Just for an example, this is the official flood mapping center provided by FEMA. I'm going to put my address in here and then this is what comes up. You then zoom in one more time and now I can see I am in the 0.2% annual chance of flood hazard. I only know flood insurance is not required because of my policy, which indicates I am in a particular flood zone that does not require insurance. So I'm paying just under $700 a year for flood insurance and I live on the water. Now, I will tell you, if you enter in a property and it comes up in this light blue zone, you definitely need to check on flood insurance. This is designated as a special flood hazard area. I would probably run for the hills on that one. Number three, elevation certificates. If you are considering purchasing a property and it's suspect to being in a flood zone, you will wanna ask and see if an elevation certificate is available. They used to be required, however, they are now optional to get insurance. This provides elevation information that can help lower your rate. The livable space in your home needs to be 13 feet above base elevation. That's why if the home is in a flood zone and low, many homes near the water around here are built up off the ground and not on a slab. Or if they are on a slab, there's no living space on the ground floor. Here's what my elevation certificate looks like. I know it's hard to read, but I am just above the 13 feet base elevation, but my garage, not my living space, is under my house. So this definitely helps with my policy. And if you find an elevation certificate is not available for a property you're interested in, you can always get a flood policy in place and then contract with a land surveying company to get an elevation certificate done. Having one could potentially save you a little bit of money on your flood policy. Number four, flood insurance coverage. Almost all flood insurance is through FEMA's program known as the National Flood Insurance Program. They will insure up to $250,000 for a single family home and up to $100,000 
for personal property. So you're probably asking yourself, what if I buy a home for a half a million dollars? What am I gonna do about flood insurance if I'm in a flood zone? Well, there's a couple things. This limit was derived mainly because most claims for flood have been under this $250,000. This would cover any new flooring or cutting out and replacing drywall due to flooding. Now, if your roof blows off or there's other structural damage, this would be taken care of with your homeowner's wind and hail policy. But if you still feel like the $250,000 limit is not enough, you have an option to get what's called an excess policy with a private insurance provider, which I'm gonna talk about in just a few minutes. Number five, insurance carrier ratings. This, I can't emphasize enough, is extremely important to hear about. Insurance companies are either rated AM Best or Demotech. An AM Best rating is recognized worldwide as the benchmark for assessing and comparing insurers' financial strength. Demotech joined the rankings arena in 1985 and is considered by many a substandard rating as compared to AM Best, primarily because they have not stood the test of time. Several of these companies did go out of business in Florida after the last big hurricane, but just a side note, they were able to pay out their claims using the state's insurance up to $300,000 of coverage. And more than likely, a Demotech quote will be less than one from an AM best rated carrier. As I mentioned earlier, with an excess policy from a private flood insurance company, you can insure over the $250,000 limit of FEMA. However, the major disadvantage of using a private flood insurance company is the risk of dealing with the longer claims processing or having your claim denied due to circumstances completely beyond your control, such as the company not having enough funds to deal with the disaster because they are not federally funded. Now, that's not to say an excess policy is not a good option, just something to be aware of. And also, just to let you know, there are approximately 80 private insurance companies that offer flood insurance. And the rates are set nationally and do not differ from company to company or agent to agent. These rates are based on many factors, including the age and type of construction of your home, along with your building's level of flood risk. And number six, the flood insurance wait policy. Through FEMA, there is a 30-day waiting period before a policy takes effect. So you can't wait until a hurricane is approaching to get insured. Now, there is an exception. If you are purchasing a home that requires flood insurance and are carrying a mortgage, there is no time limit. The policy is active at closing. Now, if you're purchasing the property with cash, there still is that 30-day wait period. So you would wanna activate your flood policy right when you go under contract on that property. Again, I am not an insurance agent. I am just sharing knowledge that I have learned as a real estate agent working with various insurance companies along with my own experience with flood insurance. I think the main takeaways I want you to get from this video is get flood insurance even if it's not required in the low country and get a quote from an insurance agent who is with a company that has an AM best rating. Again, if you have any questions, please reach out to me anytime. Thanks.